Thank you very much for uh, joining me this morning. Um, so this is going to be a webinar on understanding website performance metrics. So digging into the content, what are we going to be looking at today? So uh, four key areas. So for, first up is going to be looking at the importance of website performance metrics. Why are you know why are we recording these things? What do they actually mean for our performance from a web uh, our website and ultimately for our business? Uh, what are some of the key performance uh, metrics to look at as well? What should we what should we be concentrating on? Uh, look, have a quick look at some tools around monitoring those things that you can that you can use to uh, collect that data as well, and then interpreting and acting on performance data as well. So the important bit is, you know, we're collecting it, but what do we actually do um, with that once we've got that data? If anyone is up for a live review of your website performance metrics on this call this morning on this session, um, please pop your uh, website URL into the chat because towards the end, once we've gone through the content, if you're happy to, um, I want to load up Google PageSpeed Insights tool, run your website through it, um, and we'll take a look at some of the kind of metrics it comes back with, uh, which should I illustrate exactly the the kind of things that we'll be talking about today. So you can you can have a look at the the types of um, things that you should be looking at and how you can uh, analyze that. So if you you know feel brave enough to do that, then uh, please do. I can always run the Webbox website through it, and we can go through some bits that it spits back for that. So um, no worries if no one wants to do that. Uh, so first up is, you know, no, the, number one, what is the importance of website performance metrics? So first and foremost is user experience. Now, we've discussed this a lot over the past few weeks. If you've been on these webinars before, user experience is always the core element of what we're um, looking to improve on our websites. Um, and the reason is it drives everything. So when people are coming to the website and they're having a good experience, they're more likely to engage with you as a business. They're more likely to convert as well. Um, and that's where my good old friend here with his thumbs up comes into play. Uh, and, you know, we're getting him in all these sessions and it's good to see him back. So we want to make sure the user experience is good. We want to make sure people are happy when they come into our website. So it's really, really important that met these metrics are uh, recorded and analyzed and acted on so that we're constantly improving that element. Um, SEO performance as well. So uh, a lot of the metrics that we talk about today will, will affect your SEO performance of your website. Some of them, some of them won't, but kind of, you know, will also have a, a link in effect. And uh, ultimately, uh, we've got the kind of two main audiences that we want to keep happy for, through our website. So the first audience is our users, you know, our target audience, people that are coming and using the website, using um, your, uh, your, your business uh, website. The other is the, the search engines. So we want to make sure that we're performing well, we're, we're getting to the top of Google of being of what, whatever search engine it might be. Um, and then, you know, once people are actually coming through to the website, they're having a good experience when they get there as well. So it's really important to consider both those those factors. Um, and then ultimately, it's business goals. So when we're looking at the metrics, uh, and like I said, we'll look at some of the metrics in a bit more detail. What are the business goals for the website? So some people, you know, uh, who probably aren't on this call, uh, they, they want a website because it just, you know, it's a, it's a business card for the for the uh, for their business online. People can go and see it and see what they're about. But for others, you know, the whole business is online. So whether you're e-commerce or even if you're selling services, but that is how you you market, you outreach. Um, you want to understand, you know, how many people are coming to the website. Uh, are they engaged with the website? How, are they converting? Uh, how long are they spending on it? All these kind of metrics, um, which ultimately align with your business goals, your growth, um, and how how you're performing um, on, on a day to day basis. So then digging into the metrics themselves. So, you know, we know why they're important. We want to keep our users happy. We want to keep um, highly ranked on SEO and, and um, improve our business. Uh, but what are some of the main metrics to, to take a look at? So first up is, is page load time. Now, again, if you've been on some of these sessions over the past few weeks, uh, a lot of what we talk about is about having fast uh, page speed. Page load time is really, really important because um, the you know people's attention span is shorter than ever. People want to get to, get to information as quickly as possible. Um, and so when they are going to Google, they're searching for services, or even if they know you as an organization, they're coming to the website, they want it to be quick and they want it to, to load um, quickly because it's just a nice experience. So also from that SEO perspective, um, 
uh, search engines like Google, they are ranking people with with faster page load times higher because it's a better user experience. They don't want to send people to websites where it takes ages to load kind of thing. So um, when you're looking at this, there's some uh, several kind of important uh, metrics to look at within page load time itself. Um, and the page speed insights tool will break these down. So when we have a look at it later, we'll go into them in a bit more detail. But uh, some to be aware of are the, the first contentful paint, and the names of these are all sound a bit bit crazy. So I'm trying to get try not to get too technical. But the first contentful paint is essentially um, when the first uh, uh, text or image is is uh, uh, loaded on, onto the page. Uh, the total block in time, so that is um, from that first contentful paint to the what they call the largest contentful paint, so that's the, the largest image or text is loaded. Um, the time between both of those, so you want to make sure all these things are like as quick as possible. Um, and speed index as well. So how uh, quickly the contents of the page are visibly pop populated. So these are all things to, the, again, the, the, the tool will, will report all these back and give you a, a kind of seconds um, against it. So no, so the, uh, this is, the, the slides are supposed to just say page load time currently. So um, yeah, we're all right. Now we're changing slide. Oosh, Has that worked? Time to first bite. Perfect. Yeah, cool, lovely. Thank you guys, sorry. <laughs> There's always a disaster with these things. So cool. So um, another metric to be really um, aware of in terms of page speed as well is time to first byte. Now, uh, this is essentially, I've got a diagram here which kind of uh, visualizes it, is when the, uh, the web page is requested from the web browser or the computer you're on goes through to the server to to get that document and load it back. It's the time it takes for that kind of uh, exchange to happen and the first byte of the page load um, uh, or, or in your browser. Now, this isn't a core vital, uh, a core metric, so it won't be something that negatively affects you through Google, but it does affect things like the largest contentful paint. So um, it can have a knock-on effect on that kind of SEO uh, ranking. So you wanna make sure that uh, it's as as you know streamlined as quick as possible. So th this diagram essentially just shows you uh, the, this kind of steps that it takes. Obviously, this all kind of happens in a blink of an eye. But the the DNS TCP and the SSL piece is um, the the kind of request coming from the server, uh, that, or, or the request going to the server. Then once you've got the server response time, it then downloads that file onto the um, on the, into the browser. So there's these like I say, this could get very very technical, but. Essentially, it's that handshake between the browser and the server, and how quickly it gets that um, it, get, it gets that first byte of data. So it's important, fast, but it's not a um, web metric as well. So just just to be aware of. Then uh, we'll have, we will have a look at a couple of others as well, but also. Um, availability and uptime is a really important metric as well. And this is something again, it, it's, it's building trust with your users. So. If your you know website is dropping down all the time, or even if you know it doesn't necessarily mean that the server's dropped, but pages are working, or a URL no longer exists, or you, you know you've moved. Uh, website they're coming to use your business they're not um, you know they're not experiencing issues they're not getting um, uh, blockers when they're trying to go through the process of uh, interacting with you so this is a really important one we'll look at a tool that is very good for, for uptime later on as well but it's definitely one to consider uh, then bounce rate so uh, bounce rate is a traditional one that people have always looked at especially from a google analytics perspective um, if you've a4 you might be thinking well about bounce rate and you, you'll be right because bounce rate still exists but it's moved across to engagement rate and i'm glad you can see these slides now because you know otherwise you wouldn't get that cross out but um engagement rate is the new sort of core metric for this in ga4 um, and what it is is essentially the opposite of bounce rate. So if you look at your engagement rate percentage, it will, and you look at your bounce rate percentage, because you can still find it within GA4, um, they're essentially opposite um, percentages. So if your engagement rate was 60%, your bounce rate would be 40%, I think. Um, and what this does is the bounce rate traditionally was, you know, somebody comes to the website and they just disappear immediately. They don't interact with anything. They don't look at any other pages. They just hit a page and then they leave. So that's then that, that user has bounced. What engagement rate does is it looks um, at a few more metrics, so you can get a bit of, bit of a better understanding in terms of um, how engaged people are actually on the site as well. And there are uh, 
for, for these sessions, what classes it as an engaged session. It's either it lasts longer than 10 seconds, um, it has a conversion event happen during that session. So that could be a you know form submission or a, or a, a file download or an interaction with a button or, or whatever you because you can set those conversion um, events as well within GA4. So if someone interacts with one of those uh, elements um, or it has at least two page views uh, or screen views within that session. So it could be that it you know, doesn't last as long as 10 seconds, but they've navigated somewhere else and looked around now. Um, this obviously is really important because you want to understand uh, engagement rate on a kind of page basis as well. You can look at how engaged people are on different pages as they navigate through the site, but also there's an average engagement rate. So you can see through the whole, all of your visitors and all of your web pages, how long people are typically spending on the site and how engaged they are. Um, so this is a really important one, obviously, to measure, but also to continually review as we said at the start and make sure that that engagement rate is improving um, and the kind of thing that you want to look at as well is that people aren't spending too long on pages because that that might be a good thing because it might be that they are really engaged with the content they're really they're really, really reading it all and go, getting into it but it might also be that they can't actually find what they're looking for um, so they're, they're spending too long on that page so it's a bit of a double-edged sword but it's, it's something to kind of look into and um, yeah, analyze on a, on a more detailed basis as well depending on the page um, of, of uh, that you're looking at uh, and then we've also got conversion rate. So obviously, again, if if you're using your website as a tool to generate business, generate leads, and understand, um, uh, you know, ultimately get people through that uh, that that buying process and that that user journey, the conversion rate is going to be really really important. So where you're setting those different conversion goals, so like I say, it could be they've downloaded a file, which is a bit more maybe of a secondary call to action or conversion uh, could be they've signed up to a webinar um, all the way through to the more primary call to actions which is you know they've booked uh, they, they've booked a meeting with you or they've submitted a form to, uh, uh, to inquire about services um, you want to ensure that again your, your measure that conversion rate so what what essentially a conversion rate will say through things like da4 is that of 100 sessions or 100 visits you've had um you know 10 conversions so you've got 10% conversion rate which would be pretty high but um it, it, you, by measuring that again you want to keep on uh, analyzing that and ensuring that where people user journeys are going the kind of um user in, uh, user experience they're having and improving all these things which will ultimately um hit the conversion rate as well because um yeah you you want a, as high a conversion rate as possible to get those leads through the website Move to section three. So, looking at some tools for modern website performance. Well, briefly discussed some of these already, uh, but the Google Page Speed Insights tool is a is a, a really important one to look at for this. Uh, it's free, which is also great. There are other tools that do very similar things, but um, they're, they're paid tools. Um, or that they, they can be paid services. But um, we're, like I say, we'll take a look at it towards the end, so you can get a, if you've not used it before, you can see it kind of in in action and what it does. Um, but essentially, when you put your uh, website through it, you'll get some. Oh, this is the uh, desktop version of the uh, Webbox website, and essentially, as as mentioned, that you've got those kind of five. You've got your performance score at the top, which is the the overall score. But then you've got those um, kind of core vital metrics uh, down below the five of them, which are things like the speed index, the first contentful paint, largest contentful paint. So it gives you a score on each of those and you can you can expand it to find out a bit more info about those. And then it, uh, as I'll show you later live, as you scroll down, it will tell you um, different elements that you can do to improve uh, that, that score. So whether that's related to imagery, whether it's related to code you're loading in or the server response time, all these kind of things, it will give you um, uh, the, the kind of feedback that you need to, to take action on those. So it's really good to, uh, tool to have a look at. Um, we've also got Google Analytics. So we, as, as obviously we've mentioned uh, GA4 a few times here. And um, we've got another webinar next week, actually, which is going to be looking at these tools in a bit more um, a bit more depth. But some of the key kind of uh, metrics that you want to uh, keep, keep abreast of and make sure that you're monitoring and, and looking at within GA4 are uh, so simply users so the number of users that you're actually getting to the site um, and all, all of these can be put between a different date range so as, again where we're saying you know you're reviewing them on a regular basis you can look at how many you've had this month this quarter this year and you can compare that to the previous um, uh, 
the previous date range as well. So look at, yeah, number of users you'll get into the site. Again, if you're doing running marketing campaigns, if you're doing a push to try and get people to the site, then um, how is that changing? Which takes us to the number of new users as well. So you've got the, the metric of your total users, but you can also see the metric of new users that are coming to the site. So if you've, you know, if you've just sent out a mailer or you've been to an event or you've um, started you know, hit social media a bit more to try and get a bit more organic or you're doing paid ads. Um, you want to understand is that new user um, correlating to, to those, uh, that new user count, is that correlating to those um, efforts and, and uh, which ones are working better than others. Uh, also session number. So as users are coming to the website, you can also see the number of individual browsing sessions that they uh, that have occurred on the site. So you know what pages are they visiting? Those users. What what kind of time are they spending on the the site as well? Uh, we mentioned engagement time, and you've got that that average engagement time um, uh, metric, which will tell you in kind of like minutes and seconds how long people are spending um, on different pages and on on uh, uh, the site as a whole as well. And you've also got that conversion rate. So as we mentioned before, it will uh, Google Analytics will tell you based on the number of people who've come to the site and where you've set up those conversion goals, how many people are um, actually converting, and where you can. Um, to sort of segment those out into more primary and secondary conversions as well. You can get a steer in terms of you know how many people are engaging with our file downloads or inf or, or uh, our webinars or whatever it might be that's a bit more secondary. And then you can see how many people are obviously then on at the kind of bottom of the funnel as well in terms of um, submitting uh, forms and, and getting getting in touch that way as well. So it's just really good to to have a look at all that data. Um, a good tool as well, so we talked about uptime, is um, uptrends. This is one that we actually use uh, at Webbox as well. And it essentially, it's a paid tool, but you can install it on um, your website. You can install it on the server as well if you had you know, the full access to the server. But it essentially pings um, the website on a regular basis so that it will tell you if it goes down or, or stays up. Uh, or, or it's up, um, and it will obviously give you a report then in terms of the, the um, uptime through the through uh, certain um, time periods. But also, it does more things in terms of technical things. So it depends how far you want to get into it. But it can um, test things like APIs. So if you've got an API um, connection from your website to somewhere else, it might be you know a bespoke API that's been built for your business or organization. Um, then Uptrends can can monitor that and make sure that the connection is is running. It'll kind of run tests and make sure that uh, the connection is is open. It's not dropped. Um, and yeah, it, different basically monitoring tools like that. It can also look at things like um, user metrics and page speed and those kind of things as well. But um, yeah. Yeah, good. It's a very good tool, so worth uh, taking a look at. And then, because we're uh, somewhat uh, WordPress uh, centric, and you know, WordPress is hugely across um, across the internet, and lots of people have WordPress websites. I thought I'd also mention WP Rocket. So this is a, a great one in terms of not necessarily. Um, just for monitoring uh, things like page speed and and uh, th those kind of metrics, but this is a good tool to actually improve those metrics. So it's a, obviously a WordPress plugin, but essentially when you when you uh, install it on the site, it does things like caching of your website, caching um, of the uh, like things like imagery and uh, JavaScript and and different uh, uh, scripting files. It also uh, compresses those files as well, so it, it essentially just speeds up. Um, the the load time of those pages. So where we talked about the user experience, the SEO elements, um, this is a great kind of shortcut way of getting something in place that will um, do a lot of that work for you, and then you can concentrate on um, the the bits that it maybe doesn't cover, or the more technical bits that you uh, might need to to dig into. But that's a very good tool to um, take a look at. Uh, and then uh, the, the fourth section, so looking at interpreting and acting on the performance data. So. Um, you know, like I say, we've got the we know the data that we want to kind of look at. We know the tools that we can use um, for uh, collecting that data. But then, what do we actually do once we've got that data? And it's great to see that so many of you um, review it on a on a regular basis. But as strategies for interpreting the data, um, th th I mean, s just some basic things that you can do to to help the the process through this. So first up is to set some clear goals. 
Um, and there's not loads of slides for this, so you, don't worry if it, it's not changing here. So um, set clear goals. So like we said at the start, in terms of your business goals and looking at the website metrics, what is it that you want to improve? So is it um, is it the user experience? Is it the uh, the your your ranking on uh, you know uh, uh, Google search engine? Is it the number of conversions that you're getting? Is it the average time on site? Have a look at those metrics and understand which ones you want to improve for your business. Um, and and online, um, and then focus on those key metrics. So instead of you know, it, it's probably best to pick out the the key ones that you want to improve on and focus on those to start with, rather than you know uh, burdening yourself with thirty different metrics to try and improve uh, at, all at once. Um, you want to yeah, kind of focus focus that uh, that that process on those. Um, comparing those trends over time as well. So again, it's great to see that so many of you are, are looking at it regularly, but things like google analytics and um where you can you know select date ranges and compare that month on month or um kind of quarter on quarter then it's good to to continually compare those against each other and see how you know hopefully it's improving over time if there are drop offs or drop offs or anything then you can obviously address that as you go um but yeah the, the, those continual comparisons and if you do that through google page speed insights then you know it can be a case of just you know screenshot on it or taking uh, a note down of of the score and what it is and when you've done it um, and keeping a keeping a record that way some tools like i say where they're more pays they might use google page speed insights but they will set it up as like a, a scheduled um task so like i say you, you've got to pay for it but it's um uh, it can, can be something to take that away from you but uh, take that away for you um segmenting data is really important as well so where we mentioned in terms of the different kind of conversion types but looking at um how the uh the, the data that you're collecting is relevant to the, the different audiences or the different types of improvement that you want to make um, through the website. So make sure that you're um, looking at that as well. Um, and also, you know, from a, uh, those metrics type of view it is monitoring just user feedback as well. So if you're getting things like comments or reviews or um, that more uh, qualitative data, make sure that you're pairing that up with these metrics so that you can see over time, you know, it might be that you're really pushing hard to make sure the website is as fast as possible, but then it might be flagging somewhere else. So there's, there's another issue. So um, make, make sure that you're getting that kind of actual user feedback from people as well um, and acting on that, on that as you as you push to improve um, all the metrics across the site. Um, and then some common performance issues. So we'll dig into um, uh, the, the actual uh, Google PageSpeed Insights tool in a second, but um, some common performance issues that you'll find are things like um when we, when we look at google page speed insights will be image images are a huge one so people often upload images which are way too big for the 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 either space that they're on or it's big enough for desktop but when they go down to um to mobile the, the same image is used so things like wp rocket or um making sure that you've got multiple images for the different device sizes uh, is really important um also making sure that it's the, the images are the right format so where we've traditionally used jpeg or png images you want to make sure you you're saving those as webp which i talked about on some uh, webinars before but make sure that you are um yeah saving them as webp which is a a web specific um image format and it essentially compresses them down even more so again you get more speed boosts um other things are things like um and these are more technical i guess the the technical side of it are things like having too much javascript loading into the page not compressing those kind of files and render blocking issues which just means that uh, where we talked about the time to first byte when you're when the elements are loading in on the page if you've got a lot of like scripts like javascript or um different uh things loading into the page they can kind of block that um so it, yeah it's about either where the, where they go where the, uh, when they're loading into the page or um have you got too much of them basically uh other things which are a bit more abstract they're not quite as simple as as you know moving some files around or or uh, making things uh, as streamlined as possible will be uh, things like user journeys so understanding are there any blockers in that journey um i have done a, a webinar and a session on user journeys before so please have a look up uh, a look that up if that's something you'd uh, be more interested in but that's where it comes into as well the user experience but also the the sessions and the engagement time um 
is looking at that that user experience as a whole and understanding how people are getting from A to B um, and the kind of goals that they have when they come to the website as well. But like I say, that's a whole other uh, topic topic to uh, to drill into. And then um, priority of implementation. So uh, again, when, once you've identified all these things and the key elements that you want to um, to look at from a metric perspective, you know which ones do you go to first? Which ones are more important or less important? Now that can definitely be governed by you, like you as a as a business organization. You know some some things might be more important than others, but um for 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 me the 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 kind of the guiding principles will be looking at that user experience element first so anything that is affecting that so if the pages are too slow or the uptime is not very good or um, the process from like i say getting from a to b or how you convert um all, all those kind of things should be addressed first uh and then and then you can start digging into um other things that, that affect things like seo and and um and uh yeah the the kind of more um external pieces because ultimately when people are coming to the site you want them to have that good experience first and then worry about the more external uh, external elements but um again it can be, it can definitely be um tailored around uh, you you as a business itself so last before we just do the review does anyone does anyone want to do the live um the live review There we go. Oh, here we go. Try this one. Oh, thanks, Darren. I'll have a look at this now. Cool. Right. So this has been nominated. So if I get done for liable here, then it's not my fault. I'll blame you, Darren. So um, let's have a quick look at this. So you guys can see that. I can see, which is great. So the way this tool works, um, and I'll put a link to it in the email that we follow up as well, just so that it's easy for you to get to. But you, obviously, you can just Google PageSpeed Insights, and it will come up um, quite obviously. Um, and essentially, you pop your URL in this bar at the top. There'll be nothing down here. Hit Analyze. Um, it'll take a couple of seconds, like 30 seconds to a minute. Um, and then it pops out this information uh, down below. So what we can do up top is they, I say recently, probably over the last kind of like 12 to 18 months, they've added in more metrics here as well. So it used to just be performance, really. Um, but they've added accessibility, best practice, and SEO, which I'll, I'll breeze over. But you know, again, they, they're, they're kind of for, for a different um, conversation. Um, but what we're focused on here really is the performance. So you've got a difference here between desktop and mobile. And typically, mobile will be a lower score um, than desktop. And the reason for that is that when it does the tests, it puts it, it kind of throttles it through different um, uh, speeds. And obviously, like mobiles and uh, uh, laptops or desktop computers are more powerful, so um, faster generally than mobiles. But, um, so you can imagine, you know, if somebody's out in the back of Beyond and has got like a 3G connection, it's not very fast, then you need to make sure they're considered as well as people who are on Wi-Fi or um, in a 5G network. Although, saying that, my 5G in Cardiff is absolutely awful, but um, that's another story for another time. Um, so what we'll look at here, we've got our overall uh, performance here of 36. And then we've got these kind of main five uh, metrics as well. So we mentioned the first contentful paint. So it takes 2.1 seconds for the first uh, piece of text or image to load um, on the page. Then the largest contentful paint, crikey, is 24.4 seconds. So that's where the largest image or text gets loaded in. And then the total block in time is is it's, it's supposed to be, I mean, you can expand here, look, is the sum of all the time periods between the first contentful paint and the, oh, and the time to interactive. So when task length exceeds 50 mil, so like I say, it gets, gets all, all a bit uh, technical. But essentially, that is from that first point to when people can start scrolling on a page or interacting with that. Um, so having a look at that. Um, oh, Nick, yeah, I actually, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you about that afterwards, but um, I will, I can have a look at that if you want. Um, and um, so then as we scroll down, um, we've got these these kind of elements here. It gives you some screenshots just to show you the the, the process that it went through when it, it did the test. And then we've got the diagnostics. So there's quite a lot here to, to, to look at, but essentially, um, this is, you know, these are the things that you need to have a look at to address, and they're, they're basically more or less in in kind of speed order. So this is like eight seconds, um, this is six seconds. So where we mentioned JavaScript, you can expand it as well, and it will give you even more detail. Um, and annoyingly, a lot of this stuff will be um, kind of more developer led. So where it's maybe JavaScript related or CSS related, um, you might need to, unless you've got you know development experience, you might need to speak to 
um, your agency or, or developer to, to help you um, fix this. But some that you can look at definitely straight up are um, serve images in next-gen formats. So we, it will just show us the images here. Um, so that is, what is that in? I can't see the thing. Oh, it doesn't tell me. Um, but that'll be, that'll be like a PNG or a JPEG. Um, and basically, you can take that out. And I've talked about it before, but Tiny PNG is a good tool to do it. You can also get, if it's WordPress, you can get, uh, which this obviously is, you can get um, tools that will do it automatically. But you just put that image in, it will spit it out as a WebP format, and it will compress it down here. Let will show you even more. So you've got 785 kilobytes. It will get it down to 723 which doesn't sound like much, but when you do that across the site with all the images, you know, it all adds up. So um, it's, it's important to take a look at. So that's definitely something that you can look at action in. Properly sizing images again, so making sure that they're not like too big in the in the space that they go to uh, go in. Um, and yeah, things like defer off screen images, like I say, again, it, either if you, you're, you're using WordPress, there might be a plugin that you could install that does things like lazy load. So um, it, rather than it loading all the images at once on the first page load, it will it will wait until they come into the viewport to, to load them in. Um, but yeah, there, there's all these kind of things that it reports back. Then, like I mentioned, I'll just quickly look at it, but from an accessibility perspective, it will give you some um, sort of headline things that you can have a look at as well. Color contrast ratio is a huge one that um, always comes up. Um, links having a discernible name. So yeah, where these images are links, um, if someone's using a screen reader, they can't actually tell what that is. So it should have a name somewhere that says, you know, link to about us or whatever it might be. Or oh, it looks like it's Instagram there. Um, and yeah, some some more things you can dig into basically. But um, cool. What I'll do as well, uh, Nick, seeing as you've um, kindly popped it through, I will uh, go. Wait. I'll have a look at that as well. So the, I guess you know this will show you as well how, how kind of quick the, the the tool is as well. So I'll pop the URL in. Hit hit analyze. And give it a second. This is where it crashes now when it's live and it doesn't work. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, well, what it's actually doing in the background as well is is pretty crazy, but it takes a video. So it's loading the, the website on you know one of their own servers. Uh, it records it as a video um, with the page loading in, and then it will analyze that video to understand elements in terms of how long it's taken to load different elements in and things like that, which is, yeah, again, bonkers, but there you go. Um, cool, so cool converters. Um, we'll have a look. Um, yeah, Nick, I've spoke to Marcos a few times, so interesting to have a look at this. So uh, you again, you've got mobile desktop. Desktop 61 mobile is down at 30, and this is quite a good example, actually, because it's, it's super, super important that you concentrate on this mobile performance score. The reason for that is that Google have moved um, what what they're, they're indexing, the way they index the, the web, basically. It used to be they would use your desktop site, which obviously, again, the score is is better. It's still, it should be better than 61, really, but is is better. Um, uh, you want you want to get that as high as to 100 as possible. There, but they've moved it from mo to a mobile first indexing platform. So they'll use your mobile site to uh, go through, get all your content, understand the context of everything, um, and ultimately, you know, the performance will be an element in that. They haven't never ever said how important the speed is. They still say context and content is the most important piece. But ultimately, from a user experience perspective, this is obviously going to be a, a big impact as well. Um, so yeah, 30 uh, for this. Again, you've got these metrics here that show you how long the, the different elements take to, to load in. And then as we scroll down here, we can see, um, so eliminate blend, uh, render blocking issues. So again, it's a kind of a developer -y thing, but where we've got um, sort of st uh, styles you would load, you can load them essentially what's in the header or the footer, and then you've got the content in the middle. Um, but any of the, the kind of JavaScript bits or, you know, these are obviously all loading in. Um, so that's a JavaScript file there you do ideally want to put that in the footer if possible so that it doesn't block anything any of the content loading into the page um and hopefully that's not uh, yeah melting anyone's brain at 11 13 on a on a wednesday um 
but yeah, you know, some of these things are fairly straightforward. So reduce and use CSS. So where uh, CSS is what styles the page. So if you can reduce that and get rid of that, any of that, then uh, happy days. Reduce initial server response time. So that will be related to that time to first byte as well, making sure that, um, you know, when, once the site is requested, that server is fast and efficient and getting it back to you. Again, you've got properly sized images we've just talked about there. Um, but yeah, you know, there's, there's lots of things. We won't go into every single one in detail. But hopefully that gives you an idea of what this tool does and it's really important and i think really useful for people to know about this look at it themselves um and ultimately you know do what you can to to improve those bits but ultimately you know like most of these things it's finding the time and uh, the know-how to do it so if you need to um speak to anybody you know you know where i am um and we can we can analyze this and have a look uh, in a bit more detail we use this when we do our digital audits um and yeah it's always it's always really useful to uh, to dig into there as well so thank you for that. So um, yeah, ho hopefully that was useful in terms of the live analysis. I thought I'd try that and try something a little bit different. Um, so and just to review the content here. So the importance of website performance metrics. So like we say, is understanding how people are using the site, um, getting an idea in terms of the data for the user experience for our SEO performance and ultimately for conversions and kind of business goals and making sure we're, we're, we're growing or whatever it is we, we want to be doing as a business. Um, the key website performance metrics, I have to try and remember those now, but um, the, the, the page speed insights core um, elements around that, this, your time to first byte, so your page load speed and, and that as well. Um, things like your user sessions, your uh, engagement rates um, or bounce rate, whichever way you want to look at it, but engagement rate through that. Um, and yeah, I can't think I can actually remember what the other ones were. Um, uh, tools for monitoring website performance. So Google Page Speed Insights, we've just taken a look at that. Make sure that you um, look at that on a regular basis and see the kind of things that it reports back. Really good for accessibility um, analysis as well. Um, also, Google Analytics, so making sure you're understanding what users are, you know, where users are coming from, what pages they're viewing, um, how long they're spending on those pages as well. Um, Uptrends also is a good one for looking at the kind of availability and the, the server performance. And also, uh, WP Rocket was the example there from in terms of, uh, yeah, making sure that page speed is as is, is, uh, streamlined as possible on uh, WordPress. And then interpreting and acting on that data. So um ultimately as you know as a business as your organization what is the most important elements for you um it all does come back to user experience really for me uh it's about making sure things are fast making sure that they can find the content they need um but understanding which of those metrics relate to those goals um and then tracking those over time to make those continuous improvements um and keep your make sure your marketing uh, efforts are effective and um, doing what they should be doing um, and then finally, yeah, thank you for, for joining. So like I say, it's always great to see people coming along to these. Uh, last one next week, which is looking at the um, analytics tools. So um, yeah, I'd love to see you all on that. But um, if, yeah, like I say, if there's any questions come up, you can always email me. But um, otherwise, thank you for your time and I hopefully see you soon.